Hello and welcome to this video on CSS sprites. So the key to sprites is that they're going to reduce your load time. If you're um, uploading one image and the HTTP request is only going out once to retrieve all of your images, it's a lot faster. So then what you have to do is sort of what I call the Ouija board of web development. So I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So here I am in Photoshop and I have one artboard and I've dropped three images into it, right? I have Smiley Burrito with a mustache, Winky Nacho, and Happy Taco. I have three images in one image file and I'm going to take that and upload it into um, the web and then I'm going to only reference part of it. So if you've ever seen sort of a Ouija board, you kind of hold, you know, your the piece, uh, the 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 moving piece on the board, and you you kind of move that window over yes or no or the answers. We're going to basically do that with code. We're going to move the window over the burrito, and then we're going to move a window over the nacho, and that's what's going to be seen um, on the screen in uh, the in browser. All right, so Photoshop, drop in three or more images, as many as you want. They don't have to be the same size. They don't have to be the same height or width, or um, they can be images and illustrations. It doesn't matter. Just put them here, um, and they shouldn't overlap. They can get real close. They can be far apart. Um, doesn't matter. Um, all right, so start with there. Then we're going to save that and you're going to upload it to your web space. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tab over to my code pen and I'll show you here. Um, this is on my website. I just have this image uploaded. So you can see sort of the black background is the browser and this white background starting there is where my image starts. So if we had to say there was an image, it's it's right here, the zero, zero, this origin point is like right here and that's going to be really helpful for us later when we try to calculate where these images are um, inside the inside the, um, the code. Okay, so I've gone to Photoshop, I've put in a bunch of images in one file, I've now uploaded that one file with many images onto the web um, and now I'm going to go to my code pen to start to start to code this. So the first thing I need in the HTML is containers to hold these images. So I'm going to start in the HTML and because uh, we're looking at uh, something that's totally random, it doesn't have any sort of content at this point, we're going to just call them divs, right? And the first thing I'm going to do is make a div with the ID of original so that I can see the original image, so I can show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that div. It's empty. There's nothing in it, right? The container right there where my cursor is, that's where there would be content. There just is no content, all right? Um, and then I want to add another empty div. I'm going to give this one the ID of burrito. I didn't spell that anywhere close to burrito. There we go. And then I'm going to close it. Again, it's empty. I can tell that it's empty, I mean, for lots of reasons, right? Is that I don't have any content where it should be. But if I'm looking at the browser window here, nothing is happening. So when we add containers to our HTML, they're empty. They're only as big as their content is. So when there is no content, they're basically invisible. There's nothing there. And that's okay. We're going to add that on the other side. All right, so I have a div that will contain my original with three images, so you can see that. Then I'm gonna have a div that will contain just burrito. And then I'm gonna do the same thing um, with nacho and taco. Just a little copy and paste shortcut there. And taco. Okay, so I have three, uh, four empty divs. Empty containers, emptiness is shown in the browser. I'm going to do all the magic to make it all appear in the CSS, all right? So emptiness, containers waiting to be filled with stuff. All right, so the first thing that I know 
that's going to count for every single one of the divs is that I want to use that same photo, that same image. So I'm going to go ahead and write a rule for divs. So every single div, all four of those, I want to give the background image of the, uh, what did I call it, mexicanfood.png. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hard code that. I'm going to absolutely code that. I'm just going to flip over to my image. I'm going to copy the URL and then I'm going to paste it right in there. All right. So that's my um, web domain and then the image name, mexicanfood.png. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and end that. I have put that picture in for all of the divs, but nothing shows here. And that's because I haven't given it a height and a width. All right. Again, the div is only going to show as much content as it has. And since there's no content there, there's nothing to show. It's not going to fill the background with anything because there's no content to fill the back of. Okay. So also what I want to make sure on this is that we don't repeat any. So we're going to go to background, repeat, and we're going to set that to no repeat. I'm not sure why repeat is default, but it is a thing. So we'll go ahead and leave that there. Okay. In the HTML, four empty divs. In the CSS now, we've said, hey, I want all of the divs to have the same image. Reference that same thing. I don't want any of them to repeat, but now we want them to show up. So let's uh, go ahead and go for our ID. So we're selecting the ID of original and we're going to give it some values. The first thing we want to do is give it the width and the height so we can actually see it. So it will fill the background. So we'll do width. Now I can go back to my Photoshop file. And I can see how big my photo is, right? If I'm looking at the rulers, it's going to give me the image size. Of course, I can just go to image size and get my image size as well. Um, and that's what I'm going to fill in there, right? So I'm going to go back uh, in here. And I'm going to say width is 1366 pixels. And then I'm going to say my height is 768 pixels and now boom they just show up on my page right because the html content holders are empty they're only going to be as big as their content since there's no content they're zero by zero even though i filled the background it's filling the background of zero zero it's not going to show anything until I give it a width and a height. Now I have the whole image here, right? If I try to move this, this is one whole image together. It's in its original. But now I'm going to show you how I would isolate those, how I would put that into one of my websites. Say I, I put all of my logos in it, all of my images, maybe I have icons for navigation, something like that. I could put them all in that same folder are all in that same file um, and then I could split them out and use just as much as I need. So the first one we're going to take a look at is burrito and we want to make sure that burrito has the width of just the burrito in the image. So if I'm looking at my Photoshop file, what I want to do now is figure out how big this guy is and I'm going to use the rulers to do that. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. But um, get the, the height and the width for that guy. In this case, we have a 400 pixel width. And uh, we have the height of 750 pixels. And we'll go ahead and close that. Now, when we look down, we have the original image, burrito, nacho, taco. And then when we scroll down, we just have burrito because we've said for this div here, for this div with the ID of burrito, 
the rule for div is going to count because it is a div. So it's going to go to get this image, this background image of Mexican food. And it's also not going to repeat it. Then it's also going to follow this rule, which is for ID of burrito. And then it's going to give just a window of the 1366 pixels. It's only going to give 400 of them. It's going to start from that origin point. Remember where I said zero, zero is up at the top? It's going to start at four. It's going to go from that zero to 400, and then it's going to go from the zero down to 750 for the height. And it's going to end there. And that means it's just going to show this mustachioed burrito. Very cool. Okay. Doesn't show the rest of the image because uh, we've restricted it with the CSS. Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this because I don't like to type. And we're going to say, uh, we now want to look at the ID of Nacho. And Nacho has a very specific width and height too, but it's not 400 by 750. So if I scroll down now, you're going to see burrito again, right? We've given uh, the exact same uh, coordinates for that. But Nacho is actually 415 pixels wide and 700 in height. All right, now it's still a burrito, right? It's just not showing the entire burrito. See, it's cut off at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is change the background position here as well. So this right now is referencing everything relative to that zero, zero point, the origin point on the top left. And I wanna change that. I want it to start the background position at a different spot. And so I go into my Photoshop and I can figure out what that number is. And it's about 450, negative 450, because I'm moving backwards in the web world, right? So I want it to start there. I want origin point to be here and not um, here, not at the top corner, but at the, the top of the nacho, all right? So my position for Nacho is negative 450 pixels. And now when I put that in, you see it changed where the origin point was and now you have Nacho. All right, so original is all of them. Burrito is just showing burrito, Nacho is just showing Nacho because we had to change that origin point. We changed it to here. All right, let's do this one again. One more, because now we have that taco we want to see. So we'll go ahead and I'll copy and paste it because I don't want to type more. And I'll erase nacho, call it taco. Now I'm targeting taco and tacos width is 800. Whoops, 800. And its height is 710. So we'll go ahead and add to that. And its background position is starting at 950, right? Which I got from my Photoshop file using the rulers. I'm just looking at that. I'll go ahead and save it. And now we should scroll down and see Mr. Taco. Okay, so we started in Photoshop. We added a bunch of images to one file. Then we saved it, posted it to the web, and now we're referencing it here in our CSS. In our HTML, we have four empty containers. In our CSS, we've given all of those empty containers the exact same image without a repeat. For original, we've given it the original height and width of the file. Whatever the file image size is, that's what this one is. And now I can see all of them. Right? This was for demonstration. doesn't strictly follow the activity I gave you for the week. But, um, and then I've given burrito just its little, um, its dimensions. I've given it its singular dimensions based on the rulers in Photoshop. And then I don't need to start an origin point. I don't need to say where the background position starts because it starts at the default, which is zero, zero. Then I have nacho. So the only thing I have to now figure out is what it's its width and height. And then where is it? Where do I want its origin point really to be there? Where do I want it to start? And same with taco. So I have these. 
So you'll also notice that they're stacked on top of each other. That's because they're divs, right? The original image is side by side because it's an image. But in the code, they're divs, and divs are group containers. They're a group element, and so they will stack vertically. And so now I have these stacked vertically. Um, and I can make any other changes I want to them. If on hover, they can change a background color we could add um, and stuff like that. So I hope you found that helpful about CSS sprites. Um, really easy way to lower um, the file size actually of your site because 100 individual images is going to be way bigger than one file with 100 images, um, which seems weird, but that's, that's true. Um, it'll be less, plus, plus the website is only doing one request. It's only searching out to the server once instead of a hundred times, which is going to vastly in, in, improve your um, web load speed, which is a real advantage. All right, um, have a fantastic week.